Hey there, welcome back to The Truth Is Somewhere, where we talk about conspiracy theories and other things in that vein, that area. Megan, what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about the Winchester Mystery House. Um. <laughs> I knew that was the exact reaction you were going to have. Mm. I was like, oh man, I can't wait to talk about this, because I like find the house itself endlessly fascinating, and I really want to see the movie, and... Bonus for the Patreon patrons, we're probably going to watch the movie and then we're going to talk about the movie as, like, bonus content Yeah. to this episode. I'm sure it'll be chock full of riveting facts. facts. Heavy air quotes, by the way. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into the history. Sarah Winchester started life as Sarah Party in 1839, mm -hmm. and she lived in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, and she was born to wealthy parents, uh, you know, high social elite, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, she's highly educated. And in 1862, she married William Winchester, as in the guns. Okay. And in 1881, William Winchester died from tuberculosis, and Sarah inherited over $20 million. In, I mean, in back then, that's a lot of money. Yeah, so it, it's roughly $515 million in today's money. Okay. Uh, really not much more. Not $515 million? Less... million? I guess from 20 Like, that's yeah, yeah. a lot. Okay, sure. Fine. So she also inherited nearly 50% of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company and earned $1,000 per day, which in today's money is roughly $25,000 I would love to day. learn. A, I would love to earn $1,000 a day. Yeah. Patreon, jump on it. <laughs> hey, if you're looking for someone to sponsor and you want some better content. Yeah. Uh, so Sarah struggled deeply with her grief over her husband and also a child that they had lost in 1866. Mm -hmm. And a friend of hers suggested that she get in contact with the famous spiritualist medium Adam Kuhn to help ease her pain. And Kuhn told Sarah... I can already feel it, like, rolling off of you, where you're like, oh, spiritualist medium. I'm listening. I'm just listening. That's it. Yeah, but I can feel you're it. It is imagining palpable, you're, his, like, no, skepticism. You're imagining. No, I'm not. You're imagining how thick the air is right now. No. You and your I know spiritual you. <laughs> ways. Yeah. Um. So Kuhn told Sarah that he was in contact with Sarah's husband and gave a description of William to prove it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I even I was like, I was doing the research and I was like, the Winchesters were like famous people. Yeah. Because they were, they were like social elites and they had. Sure, there are a few pictures. Like, of I'm sure around. there were like. Black and white, but still. Pictures or paintings or like tin types or whatever. Yeah. Like running around of him and like somebody who wanted to take advantage of the very rich widow of William Winchester would Could. have found a way yeah. to know what he looked like or asked a friend or something. Maybe it's like Sarah's friend wasn't even uh, all innocent in this by sending her. Maybe like they were going to split some profits off of the money the medium was going to make. Anyway. That's true. Real good friend. As I was, as I was researching this, even I was like, oh yeah, because that proves so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Uh, he told Sarah that William wanted her to know that there was a curse on their family, and that is why both he and their child died. Oh. And so I'm going to make a note here that their child died of marasmus, which I is a disease that, is. that leads to severe malnutrition due to the inability to metabolize proteins. Okay. Um, that's, that's crazy. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Marasmus? Um, when I first looked it up, mar yeah, marasmus, M-A-R-A-S-M-U-S. -A -A mm -hmm. When I first looked it up... It, all it said was like severe malnutrition and I was like great so they starved their baby I was like that's okay. fucking wonderful and then I found more information about specifically what their child died of and it was like their child could not metabolize proteins and so it just like caused their child to waste away and die which is super super sad that's pretty sad yeah um so Adam Kuhn the medium went on to explain that the curse was because of the, quote, terrible weapon created by the Winchester family. Oh, so they created a killing machine. They created, yeah. That cursed their family. A repeating rifle, and they, like, they sold it mm -hmm. to lots of people. They sold it for, like, I think they sold it for Civil War purposes, actually. I think they sold it to the Union Army. Uh, I think so. I'm not Yeah, positive. I think they, if I, I didn't write that down, so don't well, fully quote me on it, but I think, I think they sold it to the Union Army. Yeah, okay. Um. But anyway, the medium instructed Sarah to start a new life 
out west and to build a house for herself and all the spirits that fell victim to a Winchester rifle. Mm. Uh, and if Sarah were to stop building the house, she'd die. Oh, so just keep because building it forever. The curse would the curse would catch up with her because uh-huh. she needed to do this thing to to appease the spirits, ostensibly killed by the weapon that her husband created. Okay. What about all the lives that that rifle saved as well? That's the thing that always gets me. Yeah. Like, yeah, guns used for violence, like in violence alone. But war is one of those things where it's kind of tricky, especially, especially, um, you know, certain scenarios yeah. of war where, you know, somebody is fighting for their lives. You know, two people are fighting each other and no one, neither one of them really knows, like, the whole purpose behind it. But, mm-hmm. like, that life is saved by that gun. Yeah, it took sure. a life to save a life. But what about the lives that are saved? Like, doesn't that kind of equal it out? Sure. I'm sure maybe, not every one of those. Maybe, I guess, maybe the spirit, like, the spirits, maybe not all of the spirits, like, not every mm. person who was killed by a Winchester rifle. So, what about, like, innocent bystanders? Sure. Or something. Sure. So it sounds like she has started to go off the deep end. And, to you, it does sound yeah, that way, doesn't and, it? Well, it seems, well, let me put it this way. It sounds like, I've been hanging out with our friend too much. It sounds like she <laughs> is in a state where she can be easily manipulated. Yeah, because she's grieving and whether she's or not, yeah. Whether or not this person is purposefully manipulating her, she is being manipulated. I uh, don't know the whole story about her. I know she has a crazy house. Mm-hmm. I'm I don't know any. Oh, I know you're mm-hmm. gonna get there, but everything, everything. I, I'm wondering how long it's gonna take before she starts hearing these voices. Of the dead. Okay. Continue, please. Okay. So in 1884. 1884. She heard, hears her first voice? No. Oh, damn. Sarah <laughs> finds an eight-room farmhouse on 162 acres in Santa Clara, California, which is now considered, I think, San Jose. Modest home. Mm-hmm. Modest. Eight rooms. Not eight oh. bedrooms. Eight oh, total okay. rooms. Eight total rooms. Well, I mean, we have one, two... Three, Three, four, four five. five, six, seven. We have seven rooms. Yeah. Technically. Six if you don't consider our kitchen and... Dining room, two different rooms. Yeah, and you could say the same thing about our living room and dining room. Well, but yeah, anyway. Anyways, modest-ish. Uh, like, actual, like... Probably middle, middle size. M- like, uh, upper middle class. Sure. Um, Especially for the time. So she convinces its owner, Dr. Robert Cadwell, to sell her the eight-room farmhouse. It was actually, like, still under construction when she bought it, too. Uh, so it I, wasn't even I imagine complete. that conversation went something like, I want that house. And he's like, I'm still building it. This house is for my family. I'll give Here's you a million, million dollars. dollars. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as she told everyone that she moved to California from New Haven, Connecticut, um, to be close to her father's family, who had moved to the General Bay Area during the gold rush. And Sarah hired a crew of 20 carpenters and began building the house for the spirits. Okay. She kept the crews working 24 hours a day, wow. 7 days a week, 365 days a year, for 38 years. Wow, she must have paid well. Well, I mean, you would think so, right? Cause but back then, that $1,000 a day, she could have just was going split between yeah. them. Yeah. And it would have been fine. Um, Sarah was a sole architect, and the house quickly grew to an astonishing size. It was seven stories high in some places, and it had so, uh, some five to six hundred rooms. What? So it doesn't, it's not up anymore? It doesn't exist anymore? The seven stories doesn't, because oh. in 1906, there was a really devastating earthquake in that area of California, and it knocked down those stories, and then Sarah never rebuilt above the fourth story again. And it's because it was... Uh cursed the the spirits weren't pleased i guess so they chose they they caused the earthquake the really devastating yeah. earthquake yeah of 1906 of 1906 spirit wait i like that you put i like that you put of 1906 like that was the name of it the name of it was the really devastating <laughs> earthquake of 1906 i don't know what they <laughs> called it that's just what i'm calling it back in my day i remember now quote me on this, the really devastating earthquake of 1906. I was kind of uh, channeling my Sean Connery on that one a little bit. Okay, it wasn't yeah. very good, I'm sorry. I, not entirely, I said a little bit. Okay. There, right. there was a little bit of Sean Connery in that. That's, that's a little better. Um, Alright, 
Oh, we're okay. gonna get to the interesting stuff now. Oh, we're not there already with the <laughs> no. the really de- really devastating earthquake of nineteen oh six. So what makes a house um, itself particularly interesting isn't how big it is or its beautiful architecture. It's the fact that Sarah would hold a seance every night at midnight Ooh. to get instructions from the spirits oh. for what should be built the next day. There it is. There it is. There it I is. I know, you were waiting for it, yep. and there it is. Wait, when did that start? I guess pretty every much, night. Pretty much immediately when she moved yeah, into the She house. was like, I don't know what to do. Let's have a seance. As any sane individual does. <laughs> yeah, so she would have a seance, and she'd commune with the spirits. And the spirits would tell her through a, I believe, a Ouija board. Um, not to say that people who have seances are not in are not insane. Are <laughs> insane. Not to say that they are insane, <laughs> but rather uh, uh, to do this is not sane. To do what she's doing is not what I would say is a um, regular level. It's certainly not the norm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, it's not. It's certainly not the norm. Well, you know. I would, I'd like to refrain from using words like crazy. I didn't use that word once. Or insane, or not sane. I didn't use the word crazy once, but I did accuse her (laughs) of not being sane. Like, those are, like, splitting the teeny tiniest little hairs. Yeah, and I'll split those hairs all night. (laughs) Ah, God. Um, Up until midnight, until she has that seance, and I'm running. You're running, because, like, even though you don't believe, you might believe a little bit. No, because she might try to build... Build a room around, around me you? like The Sims. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and then make me pee in a corner. <laughs> uh, um, so she holds a seance. The spirits tell her through a Ouija board what they want, and then she sketches it all out, and she takes it to the, her contractors. And, like, there were there were notes about the contractors being like, oh, this won't work, and she'd be like, okay, can we tweak it like this and make mm-hmm. it work? And the contractors were talking about how, like, she obviously knew what she was doing. Like, wow. she wasn't bringing stuff to them that they were like, no, this is impossible. Like, she, like, had the math figured out, even. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, she was probably a smart lady from a wealthy family like, that could pay to get her into college. Yes, like, she was highly educated. That's, that's something that well, was talked about a lot, is that she was very highly educated. You know, but you know a little bit... But for a woman in the 1800s, like, that's pretty incredible. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That is pretty incredible for them. Or it was the spirits. Just telling her exactly what to do no it was her education okay i mean it could have been the spirits i mean if we're gonna believe in the spirits then let's just believe in the spirits (laughs) breaking that fourth wall hey (laughs) um so here's what's so like this the house is so interesting and i want to go see it so bad Mm -hmm. like we're planning this big trip to Disneyland, and I was like, how close is the Winchester Mystery House to Disneyland? It's not. It's not close at all, so we're not going to go see it when we go to Disneyland. But someday, I'm going to plan a trip just for us to go to the Winchester Mystery oh, yeah. House, because I want to see it so bad. And we'll record it and put it on our Patreon. Maybe. Uh, if they allow you to record, they might allow, not allow that. Hey, look, I'll find out a way. Anyway, the reason that I want to go see this house is because it contains rooms within rooms. Mm-hmm. Staircases that lead to nowhere, like they just go into the ceiling. Okay. Um, I can imagine that. Doors that open up onto walls. Tiny mm. doors that lead into huge spaces. And rather large doors that lead into tiny spaces. Uh, the house has 47 chimneys, and some of them just lead to a ceiling. Mm. There are skylights that have roofs over them, and skylights that have other skylights above them. And there is even one skylight in a floor. That would be a floor light. Apparently. Well, it's the skylight <laughs> for somebody light. else. That's a ground light. Like, the level below you, that would be a skylight, and for you, it's a floor light. Well, then wouldn't that be a skylight with a ceiling above it? No, like, that's, like, ceiling built directly over the skylight. Yeah, well, you said there were skylights with ceilings above them. Yes. And there were even s- skylights built on the ground. There's one. There's one, one. skylight in a floor. On a floor. Mm-hmm. What floor? I don't know. It's so, in a floor. Oh, is it floor? If it's floor one, it just looks into the dirt. That's true, but I don't think... I think it's on floor two. By the pictures, it kind of looks like it. Oh, well, then that would be a skylight with a ceiling above it. Or a skylight no, with a skylight above it. When I say it. it's a skylight with a ceiling above it, I'm uh, not saying, like, it's a skylight that looks into a room with a ceiling. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that, like, there's a skylight and, like, two inches above it, there's a ceiling. That's uh, what I'm trying to explain. Oh, that's different. Like, false ceilings so with skylights tiny, in them. It's a very tiny little ant room. Yes. Yeah, there you go. With a very large door. It okay. leads into a tiny space, right? Because there's okay. something about that, too. Um, there's a door on the... Don't tickle me. There's a door on the second... What? Nothing. There's a door on the second... There's a door on the second floor. 
um, that opens up to outside. No balcony. Okay. Just, like, drops onto the ground. Yeah. So if you walked out that, you would probably at least have some broken ankles. I've seen, I've seen some old buildings that are like that, that had, like, the, um, fire escapes taken off of them. Oh, yeah. That wasn't built with a fire yeah. escape in mind, though. She just put a door there. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is I can picture it. You can it. picture it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then picture it on a really beautiful Victorian house. With, like, all the beautiful, like, trim Makes me think of the Adams. Yeah, totally like the Adams family, yeah. Totally like the Adams family, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. The, co- the house is covered in upside-down pillars. And it has several master bedrooms. And Sarah is said to have slept in a different one every night so the spirits couldn't find her. And there was also some talk, so I don't know how to reconcile these two things, because one, the spirit is t- the spirits are telling her how they want the house built, right? Mm-hmm. But then on the other hand, like, some people were saying that Sarah built the house with, like, such confusing things with, like, doors that led to nothing, and, like, so doors that, that went outside, so that the go. spirits got confused. So I don't know, like, is it that they were telling what, her what they wanted, and she was adding some extra things to confuse them? Mm. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. But, like, these are two very sincerely held beliefs about it. One or the other. <gasps> or something in between. Something in between, I think. Maybe. Okay. Um, by the numbers. By the numbers. The numbers 7, 11, and 13 show up a lot throughout the house, particularly the number 13, which is like after my own heart. Mm-hmm. Almost all of the windows have 13 panes of glass. Every staircase but one has 13 steps. And the one staircase that is left out is a spiral with 42 steps that only rises 9 feet. And each stair is only two inches high. 42. Okay, so 13, 26, 52. Yeah, so not divisible by 13. The chandeliers uh, were reworked to hold 13 candles rather than 12. Mm-hmm. The house had 13 bathrooms and 13 sink drains. Oh. And her will was written in 13 section sections and was signed no less than 13 times. Off one for each section, I would imagine. Uh, 7 and 11 are generally viewed as lucky numbers, but the number 13 is generally thought of as unlucky, and Sarah is said to have used it to help ward off the evil spirits. Oh. By putting, filling the house with an unlucky number. Maybe it's a misconception. Maybe it is Maybe she believed it was a misconception. Maybe she did. Um, the house was considered cutting edge. You might find this actually kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Sarah is believed to be the first person to use wool insulation. Wool? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That would work. Probably pretty well, actually. Yeah, I would think so. Well, I mean, wool is really good at insulating stuff. That's why we wear it. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically the insulation is the air in between, but, but it's still. It's really expensive. It's really good at keeping things from passing, I guess is a good way to yeah. put it. Heat. And then um, the house was lit by carbide gas lights, supplied with gas by her own gas manufacturing plant. Hey, if you got it, use it. Yeah. Um... So this is what I think you might find really interesting. The house employed electromechanical strikers that would cause a spark to turn on the light when a button was pressed. That's cool. So she was like ahead of her time on that. Like it was essentially way ahead of her time. Like those lamps where you've got the little um, flint and steel and you turn it and it it. Except uh, there's a the button flint. with wiring that leads to like the. Oh, it's wiring. So it was stuff. electricity. Yeah, electromechanical. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, when you say mechanical, it means that there probably is something that it's causing to turn. There's something in the walls that's leading to the chandeliers that's causing... What I'm saying is it's electromechanical. Electro, obviously, meaning electricity. Mm -hmm. But normally, um, and I would imagine this is like the official word for it, Mm -hmm. you throw the word mechanical in it, and mechanical means something is moving. moving. Well, because there was strikers. Which yeah, is so that's what I'm striker, saying. So there striking. was there was probably a flint but there and was steel electricity involved in that. So, yeah, so what I'm saying is there was probably a little little something in there that spun, because you don't want just an open spark from electricity that'll burn your house down. Mm-hmm. An open spark from flint and steel, something in there, some little tiny motor that that causes that flint mm-hmm. and steel to spark, and boom, now you got you got light. What happened? Yeah. So what would start the gas though? I don't know. That's I don't know. That's kind of scary. This is the end of what I know about this. Okay. Um. I need you to get me direct contact with the carpenters <laughs> so I can have a conversation with, the with them. The electrician and yeah. the Well, they probably weren't even electrician. Well, 1886, yeah, maybe maybe the IBEW existed by then. I think it did. I think it was 19 
No, that was 18. You know, I think it was like 1880 or 1890, somewhere in there. So maybe they existed by the time. Maybe. They probably weren't employed. Not by that her. Mm-hmm. Anyways. When Sarah passed away in her sleep at the age of 83, made it to the ripe old age of 83, construction completely stopped. Like, they just stopped in the middle of what they were doing. Like, there's still half-driven nails in places wow. in the house. Because they were like, nope, don't have to do this anymore. The old lady croaked. I really wonder what that job paid. It must have paid well enough for them to keep doing it for 38 fucking years. Yeah, and they were like, I'm not getting paid for this. Yeah, and they all walked away. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, the ex- house exists now as a historical marker of San Jose, California, and offers tours as the Winchester Mystery House. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Just in my head, I was laughing, I'm sorry. At Halloween, they take people on flashlight tours and help perpetuate the idea that the house is haunted by the spirits of those killed by Winchester rifles. Oh, of course. That would be yeah. a great Halloween. Oh, uh, totally. I, I would say I'd really love to go there for Halloween, but no, because that would be this horrible, gaggled mess. There'd be so many people there. Mm-hmm. This would not be worth it. Yeah. Um, so this, I realize that this is a little bit outside of our normal purview. And I've basically been obsessed with this since I was a little kid. And so I really wanted to talk about it. And I know, like, it has the word mystery in it. And I know that this doesn't, like, there's not a lot of conspiracies. But I did, I did find one other theory. Because the big main theory is that obviously that ghosts were talking to her. Mm-hmm. And obviously Corey's theory is that she was not sane. To split the hair is very tiny. Um, you know, maybe she just wasn't uh, wasn't seeing things clearly. Maybe. Let's, let's just say it like that. Her mind was a fog. Okay, her mind was a fog. That's Corey's theory. Most people think that she was talking to spirits, and the spirits helped her build the house. Wait, wait. I hope you're using the word most people loosely. Well, the people who believe in this kind of stuff believe. Okay, sure, but. sure. The generally accepted no. story I'll give you that. about okay. the Winchester Mystery House is that the spirits were talking to her and she built the house with the help of the spirits. Moving on, I did find another theory, and um, I found this from a website. <laughs> so don't put too much stock in this. What's I found website? this from a website that's called the Truth About Sarah Winchester dot com. Oh, it's official. It's official. It's a dot com. They paid for that, mm-hmm. and it says the truth about. Yes. We know that when you put the truth in the title, it makes it 100% better. The truth is somewhere, and apparently it's at thetruthaboutsarahwinchester.com. That's where the truth is. That's where the truth is. You heard it right here. We can stop now. Um, No, don't. No, no, we're not going to stop. So, thetruthaboutsarahwinchester.com says, uh, and I tried to look for, like, who the author was, but I didn't see it, and I may have completely missed it, and that sucks on my part, but anyway, I don't know, like, the person, I just know the website. Mm-hmm. So they, they note the fact that Sarah was raised in an area known for academic prestige and was exposed to masonry. Oh. And she embedded encrypted codes in her architecture of the mansion using Francis Bacon's cipher techniques, most heavily ri- relying on the Pythagorean table 1 through 9. So, like... That table essentially is, like, you have the numbers 1 through 9, and then you have all 26 letters of the alphabet lining up to those 1 through 9 numbers. Okay. So the first first 9 letters, and then the next, you know, 10 through 18, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. Okay. Right. So each one of those letters corresponds to a 1 through 9 digit. Okay. Um, using the table essentially means taking the numerical version of each letter in a name or word and adding them up until you have a one simplified number. Zeros are regarded as null, and they are left out. So, for instance, the name Sarah would add up to the number 20, but would simplify simplify to 2 because zeros don't count. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah viewed the number 52 as highly important, as it was the number that represented the name Winchester. There are 52 skylights in the mansion, and the bodies of her daughter and her husband are interred in plot number 52. Do you remember what I said about the number 52? Not divisible by 13. It is divisible. It by is 13. by divisible. Forty two is not. Gotcha. Forty two steps. Or forty two stairs. Right. And so thirteen plus thirteen is twenty six. Twenty six plus twenty six is fifty two. Okay. So Interesting. Well maybe that's why she likes the number thirteen so maybe. much. Maybe. Way to go, Corey. Yeah. Um, so this person says that she used this form of cipher in all of her architecture, creating a puzzle just begging to be solved. 30, 13 is also a prime, which means it's it's a prime number, which means it's the lowest whole divisible number that 52 could be separated by. Okay. Well, well, let me take that back. Potentially. 
Cause, okay. Well, other than prime number. Yeah. Excluding well, or just one. Whole prime number. 330. Yeah. Okay. Prime number. It's anyway. probably it's probably the largest. I'm speaking on my ass at this point. Okay. <laughs> it's a prime number. People like it for that reason. All right. She carefully crafted Masonic and excuse me because this word is something I had never seen before. Rosicrucian which is another brotherhood similar to masonry masonry claiming to have some sort of esoteric wisdom and she used their symbols in her mansion including having the entrance face the east to represent the light sought by masons and people can only enter her house through the northwest corner just like in a masonic lodge okay and this is just what this website says this is just what the website says okay so whether there's, I found another theory whether was, there's proof it. or not this is just what this, this website is what the says. website says okay um, I there can't were, argue any of this because I've never even seen the place. Yeah, there were several more several more connections to Francis Bacon and through him Shakespeare, including stained glass windows with quotes from Shakespearean plays. Okay, in the house. I mean that makes sense if she likes it and the ghosts tell her to um, quote Shakespeare, she's gonna do it. And then I'm pretty much gonna cut this theory really short at that point. That like, basically they're saying that rather than being <laughs> being led by spirits, she was like somehow connected to these weird like shadow organizations like religious organizations and she was using their symbols Mm -hmm. and i don't know why that would mean that she has to build fucking staircases to nowhere and the website didn't really explain it other than she was building a puzzle and that maybe it had something to do with like i don't want to say hazing but essentially the hazing you go through when you step into one of those organizations when like you become one of them they Uh like put you through a quest essentially Uh and so this website thinks that sarah was building the house as part of a quest for something in one of those religious brotherhood organizations like can you walk can you get to the final floor of this house Uh, or like can can you you walk through (laughs) can you point out like all of the Uh like the symbols and like what the meanings are and the numbers and like find them all find all of this I don't know. That's This is what the website was claiming. So either she was, like, led by crazy ghosts or she was led by crazy religion. I don't know. Well, you're the one throwing crazy around now. Yeah, well, I'm not going to split hairs. Okay, well, there you go. There you have it. That's So it's 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 ghosts or numerology and religion. Those are... That's it? Those are the two theories I've got Don't those often it. get linked together? Yeah, I think they do. Because, like, so spirituality. It could, be it could be all of it. Ghosts and numerological... Maybe... <laughs> logical... <laughs> Words are hard. Numerolo... Numer- numeral... Numeral... <laughs> now you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> numeral... I don't know. You just read it. Numerology, but I, you're trying to go to logical... Numerological? Numerological? Numerological. <laughs> that that can't be a word. If you're it is, welcome, you're Patreon wrong. welcome for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, blooper. Wait. Oh, no. This is going into the real oh, deal. You're keeping it in. Why? Okay, you're I welcome, make everyone. Cuts. You're welcome, everyone. There's no need to cut this out. This is content. This mm-hmm. is good stuff. There you, there you go. There you have it. That's the Winchester <laughs> Mystery House. And that's all, folks. <laughs> Oh, wait, we got an <laughs> outro. <clears throat> That's not all, folks. That's not all, folks. Stick around for one more moment. So, uh, you... Wait, I don't even know. What, what are we saying? <laughs> okay. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TTIS Podcast. If you like what we're doing, you can support us by um, uh, liking, reviewing, subscribing over on iTunes, Stitcher, whatever platform. You can find us on anywhere that podcasts can be found, including YouTube. Um, if you would like to email us, you can email us at the truth is somewhere podcast at gmail.com. You can find our show notes at the truth is somewhere.com and awesome merch over at the truth is somewhere dot com. Oh, you got that down. That's all folks. Woo. I like that.